guess it's fair. I guess we're going to start off like this. Think of his name. Lebrado um, Andrade or Andrade. No, he's not related to the 154-pound junior middleweight champ, Demetrius Andrade. But he was the guy that if it wasn't for the, if it, excuse me, if it wasn't for the referee, he was supposed to hand Lucy and Butte 31 and 2 with 24 KOs, the former IBF champion until Carl Frotz. He was supposed to hand him his first defeat, meaning Andre, before Carl Frotz knocked him out in five. So, if you don't know, I'm T Street Controversies. This is T Street Controversy Live, and I cover boxing. Lucien Butte, 31 and 2 with 24 KOs, is going to be taking on a fighter by the name of um, Roberto Bulanti. 35 and 3 with 24 knockouts. Most notable opponents, Tony Bellew. So once again, please subscribe. I have a Facebook page. You gotta click the link below. I had to change my name of the Facebook page. Long story short, I'm T Street Controversia, meaning controversy in Spanish on Facebook, but on here I'm T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy Live. So, take this time out to subscribe. We're going to talk about some boxing. Now, one thing I, I noticed about the Romanian-Canadian Lucien Butte is that it seems as though when he fought Glenn Johnson and after, his power had diminished. And I'm thinking to myself, well, what happened to that mean-ass uppercut to the body he used to have? Remember, once Carl Frotz knocked him out, a lot of question marks was put around his career about his chin and his toughness. Now, he already had those Andrade problems, but then he had a rematch against Andrade and knocked him out. But he should have won, but he should have lost if we had any other referee. I'm going to say, if we, if, like, he should have lost that fight. The fight should have been stopped. He's lucky that he's still walking around without any damage or anything neurologically right now. Go back and watch the fight if you don't know what I'm talking about. Lebrado, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name right, but Andrade, Andre, like Demetrius Andre, the 154-pound champ. So, moving on. He fought Jean Pascal, and if you notice, remember Jean Pascal, and I forgot when that was. Forgot when that fight was. I believe it was in January of this year. I covered the fight. Um, if you go look at that fight, Jean Pascal was gassed. Jean Pascal was trying to act like he was showboating in that 12th round, but Lucien Butte had plenty of chances to capitalize and finish him off, and it just seemed like none of his punches were hurting. Even him, um, Dennis Grachev, and he definitely didn't hurt Cole Frotch. And he beat Glenn Johnson on the cards. So I'm thinking, what happened to all those knockouts? Now remember, he's 31, he got 31 wins and 24 knockouts. So I'm thinking, he's fighting at 175 now. His last two fights have been above the 168 pound limit where he lost his IBF championship to Cole Frotch. Now, if you don't know, he's training with Freddie Roach. He's going to be with Freddie Roach while Freddie Roach is going to the Philippines, you know, to train Manny Pacquiao for the fight in um, Macau. He'll most likely probably be at the fight, and the fight is going to be taking place like, on December the 6th in uh, Montreal, the Bell Center. You know, that's where Jean Pascal fights, Lucien Butte fights all the time, Zeri Jean, so even, um, even um, um, Madonna Stevenson. So... I'm thinking to myself, Lucien Butte is fighting in the 175-pound division. Now, he's a full 175-pounder. He started his career above 168, but made his bones and had all those title defenses at the IBF at 168. So he's back at 175. Um, two fights, Denis Grachev and um, this guy right now, Roberto Belanti. So I'm thinking, okay, well, who are the champions in the what 175 pound division and when I think of fighters a guy like Bruce Lucien Butte I'm thinking okay well you're fighting to be a world champion again you're still young if I'm correct he's like 33 years old or a little bit younger he still has some time you know he only had one knockout and, and the loss he had to uh, Jean Pascal wasn't a bad loss it almost like was a timid loss like he didn't want to get knocked out you know so he didn't take no risk and I'm not saying you should take risks but what I'm saying is his offense was too conservative you know, so it wasn't until that 12th round when he started opening up, and then you're looking at him, and I'm talking about the Pascal fight, go and watch it. You're thinking like, yo, okay, a lot of them wasn't landed clean, but then the ones that was landed clean, like, he did not hurt Pascal not once. So, he's working with Freddie Roach, and I'm hoping Freddie Roach will be able to fix that for him. Now, as far as mentally, 
I don't know how tough Lucien Butte is mentally right now. He showed toughness against Dennis Grachev. Now, I covered that fight. What I noticed about the Dennis Grachev fight is at the beginning of the fight, you can tell he did not want to get knocked out. But after, I believe it was round seven on, is when he started letting his hands go and the crowd was cheering. He was gaining his, moment. He was gaining his confidence back as that fight went on. You know, then he goes and fights Jean Pascal. He didn't start getting confidence once again until the end. You know, so coming out on this fight, for one, this Roberto Bellani guy, he's got 24 KOs. He's 5-1 and one in his last six fights. Before his last fight, he lost his last fight. But before that, five straight knockouts. You know, and then you think, okay, then he fought Tony Bellew. So you think, well, he's got 24 KOs despite who he's knocked out, and he's from Argentina. You know, those Argentines been having a good year. Maybe he's going to come over here and probably, maybe he's going to go up to Canada and go swing for the fences and try to knock out this mentally, you know, this somewhat mentally weak Lucien Boutet. You know, and questionable chin, Lucien Boutet, because Dennis Grachev rocked him a couple of times. Not more so Jean Pascal. But, I don't know. I'm glad to see him back because, you know, he is a good fighter. But I think he should go back to a guy where he is, you know, the body work. As I've been watching his last couple fights, especially after, you know, Carl Frost, Dennis Grachev, Jean Pascal, I'm thinking, like, what happened to that body work he used to be knocking everybody out with? You know, it seems to be nowhere to be found. You know, you know Jesse Brinkley, um, who else? Jesse Brinkley, um, the guy Mindy. What is that noise? But, you know, I'm not going to hold you too long. I'm T-Street Controversial with Real Combat Media. Real Combat Media, right down below, boxing website, all your articles, boxing articles, mixed martial arts, boxing, of course, jujitsu, you know, and all my videos, and there are actual boxer interviews right down below. So, what I'm going to say is subscribe. I cover every single major fight live. So, since I do a prediction on this, that means I'm going to be covering this fight live. On December the 6th, and December the 6th is already a crazy night in boxing anyway. You got maybe Canelo, Amir Khan, Lucien Butte, and somebody else fighting on the same night. I forgot. Oh, maybe uh, Deontay Wilder by Mangsta Vern. It's crazy. So, once again, T Street Controversy, T Street Controversy Live. Subscribe.